Welcome to Real 45 with Stefan and Greg Hancock. We vibe out and have real talk, so tune in and check this out. Yeah, today is a new day. Let's seize it now and get hype. We talking about our careers, our family, and just life. Yeah, share my story with you. Inspiration like every day. Real 45, we gonna keep it live. I keep episodes on replay. Episode 50, yes, welcome to the Real 45 podcast. This is episode 50, I'm Greg Hancock, I'll be your host again today. My big bad buddy, uh, Stefan Janelle, and I, we have not been able to uh, get ourselves together again this week. It just seems to be those demanding things in life that uh, get the better of us sometimes. I'm here, he's there. And quite often, it's vice versa. He's usually here, and I'm never here. I'm always there. <laughs> but, uh, hey, it's another day. It's a beautiful morning. It's quite an early morning. And uh, hang on one second. I'm just going to give you a cheers. That was just a sip of coffee there. <sighs> Can't complain. So, welcome to another weekly edition of our uh Real 45 podcast. This is pretty cool. Uh, learning to do this stuff solo. I've had Stefan with me most of the time, or we've always got a guest. And sometimes I just talk, because I that's kind of how this all got started. I just talk. And I can talk, and I can talk, and I never seem to really shut up. But uh, that's okay. It's better to get it out than keep it in, right? I think even Shrek said that once. Better out than in, <laughs> in a different manner. <laughs> But uh, it's been a cool week. Things have been happening. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, we're in the finals periods now for virtually everything. The Polish League is finished. We won the championship in the Division Two, And uh, that was the ultimate goal, to move up to the first division. So in a three-year process, we've achieved goal number one. Now it's time to uh, rebuild, restructure, reload, and get moving and build the the team for the first division next year this is gonna be pretty cool because it's you know the, the second division was interesting i've i took the decision to hop down two divisions for specific reasons that we've talked about before now i've actually done it and uh you know you get people start to look at you like what are you doing man and uh this is what i'm doing it's a very interesting uh what do you want to say, project or concept or, or challenge that was put in front of me uh, by this Erik Nowrotsky, the new uh, owner of our club in, in Jezhov. Now he's also the creator and, and uh, promoter of the uh, Diamond League, the Diamond Cup. So that's also going off right now. Pretty cool. Um, this guy has, he's got an interesting vision and a view on Speedway. On, on uh, He's really eccentric. He's, a, he's, a, he's an innovator. He's an investor. He's He's a contractor, and he's just an all-around pretty rad dude. Nobody really knows him. Nobody really knows what to think of him because he, he thinks outside of the box. He does things differently, and for me, that is so cool. So it's been, uh, you know, I have my uh, my uh, my wishes and my dreams and how things could be and how they should be and what would be better for Speedway, et cetera, et cetera, and, and this guy meets all of those that criteria, I should say, and and way more. So, I'm I'm pretty stoked to be a part of it. It wasn't hard to make the deal with him and jump out of the extra league because I I just think that uh, he's taken a step in uh, the direction where Speedway was, you know, and it's uh, on the way up and the growth and the the, the good, the fun, the the success and um, and uh, really the the one on one working with the riders and and uh, growing with the thing together. So it's pretty cool. Stoked to be there. I'm really, really stoked. Style Zhezhov, we won the Division Two championship this year. The fans were, pheno- were phenomenal. The team was great. We had a few injuries that slowed us up here and there and even gave Luke Becker a chance to uh, to jump in and, and play ball with us, man. And the kid has just gone from, yeah, from, uh, you know, uh, stepped it up constantly. He's just getting better all the time. He listens well. You know, he's... You can tell them what you think they need to do, but they often need to experience it in order to uh, to get the full feel. And, and Luke is definitely a, a prime example of that. He's been feeling the situation out and getting better all the time, strength to strength. So, uh, yeah, the kid's good. It's nice to have an American uh, making that kind of progress at such an early age and not 
having to start his career in the UK. So, uh, yeah, we thank Stiles Jezhov, and we thank, thank the people from, uh, from uh, Dakana Speedway here in, in Sweden, too. They have also opened the doors and given him a chance to jump into their Division One team just to get his feet wet. And uh, he had a couple of good races and a couple of that were not so good. But, again, it's the learning curve, and he's done various open meetings. Now he's heading to the Czech Republic to ride in the, the junior, the Golden Ribbon race in Pardubica this weekend, and hopefully in the Golden Helmet, and then the Tomacek Memorial on Monday. So he's getting a lot of riding in, and, and then you guys will even see him in uh, uh, Wolverhampton, the U.K., on the 15th of October. He will be there for the Olympic to do some... Uh, to do some riding, to get a feel for the, the British tracks. And uh, who knows, he might uh, dig around and meet uh, a few future potential options to, to go ride in the UK in the future. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. We're hoping that the kid uh, carries on. I'm sure he will. He's so devoted, so respectful. So He's just a great kid. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Otherwise, I'll, I'll blow his head up too much, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> he's lucky Luke. Lucky Luke. So moving on. We we now had the first round of the Swedish finals for, for my team here, Dakana. Hold on one second. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, another drink of coffee. Needed that. Got to get myself going. Got to get the day started, you know what I'm saying? So we had the first round in Molilla last, last Tuesday, and it's nuts because, you know, the, <laughs> this year has been so awesome. The weather has been so killer. Just warm, nice, sweet all year. I think from the first meeting, we've, we've more or less had shorts and a t-shirt on, literally, up until these this last couple of weeks. And suddenly we go to the finals here, and it was so chilly and windy and, and cool. And uh, we, you know, I think it caught everybody off guard a little bit. And you know, we wanted to win. We want to win. I shouldn't say we wanted to. We wanted to win the home match first, but uh, it didn't go that way. The guys were, were you know, we, we got Chris, uh, Christoph Kastrak in the team replacing Patrick Dudek. We had uh, an injury to Joel uh, Kling in Poland the day before. So suddenly our team's been feeling like, okay, here, here we've had this great run, the same team all year, and suddenly we're getting just pile-driven into the ground with injuries and stuff like that. But uh, Caps Jack came in, really helped us out to get uh, to get the ball rolling and and cover for for Patrick. And then Joel was riding with a cracked rib, as we understand it, and uh, which has got to be super super painful. But he came in, he did the job far better than we expected. Was so charged up, just he wants a gold medal, you know, like the rest of us. So we were ready, we're we were loaded, and we got uh, we got there in a, another cold rainy day and and. Um, Got off to not a great start for myself, but then we pile drove in like three five ones in a row, and uh, jumped up with a healthy lead, you know. And and uh, I continued working, trying to get my my own equipment going good. And we had everything set up. We had our plan. We had the the bikes, the gearing, the you know everything was supposed to just flow. And then you just get these nights, you know. They just they just don't flow sometimes, and you're like, what the. F- Yes, exactly. Um, it's been going so great all year, and then suddenly you you drop the clutch, and it feels like somebody picked picked the back wheel up off the ground, and it's just like holding you up there, and you're spinning and going, "Dude, let me go." And that happened a couple of times, and and suddenly you're battling to get into the first corner. It was a one line track because it was so slippery and hard, and you you couldn't do. There was it was virtually impossible to pass, uh, except when I got past. <laughs> As Luke Becker likes to remind everybody, I saw that guy pass you. <laughs> so uh, it was uh, it was a challenge and a half, you know. And um, no matter what we did, you could see everybody doing the same. Everybody except Maciek Janowski, who was just you know fabulous again, making great starts, demanding and just owning the night. So he was our savior for sure. Um, a few of us didn't have the nights that uh, we had hoped for, and. And doing everything we can to, to keep it close, you know. They they battled back, uh, Smiadana, and came back and ended up uh, just jumping up in front of us uh, before the, the last couple of heats. And um, it became crucial. Now we need to really find a way forward and keep the dream alive, you know. But uh, the last heat made another drastic adjustment. 
and jumped out. Both Malchik and I jumped out and got a 5-1 in the last one to, to bring it uh, to within two points. They, they beat us by two points overall. But it feels like that <laughs> that that last five one is just what we needed just to to realize, okay, we got it now. Now we need to turn this thing around. Tomorrow we come in as the underdogs, we're below, and uh, you know, day after we're gonna we're gonna hand it to them. So uh, we're ready to go. And it's just again, you just go back and you look at. It. I think I ended up with like paid seven points or something, and and just the. What do you want to say the the stresses the the frustration and you do everything that you do week in and week out and suddenly nothing seems to work and uh, then you got to think outside the box you know it doesn't just work to go out, to go in and, and put the same gear ratio or your same carburation adjustments or your ignition or your wheelbase and all these silly things that you do uh, I say silly but they are the, the the technical things you have to do to try to make it work and it didn't work so you know between myself and and uh, Oscar on the night that night trying to to make it work we we both were just uh, kind of uh, back and forth and we went for something really really drastic change for the last heat which we kind of got uh, the heads up from from Janowski what he was doing too so it was really really helpful to have you know have teammates you can't win these things on your own when you get your teammates to come up and say hey Maybe you ought to try this, or maybe you ought to try that. This is working for me. And sometimes that is the key. That's what you need to do, and sometimes it just doesn't work because you are a different type of rider. You have a different engine combination. You have a different chassis. You have different wheels. You have different whatever. And you, you know it's not going to work, but you got to try it, and lo and behold, it works. So, hey, thanks, Magic. You gave us some key information there that turned it around in the last heat, and we got a valuable, valuable 5-1 and uh, called it a night. So we rolled on to the following day. It was a, you know, it's a long ride home, back to our place, our base here in, up in the Nortelli area, and we, we made our way back. Got everything ready to go, cleaned up, ready to go for, for Tuesday, and it was, a, it was a wet morning, sorry, for Wednesday. It was a wet morning, Wednesday morning, and uh, we got up and got everything rolling and, and uh, eventually made our way to Escostuna and it was a beautiful afternoon. Everything looked great. A little bit cloudy and stuff when we got there, and saw they were packing the track when we got there too. That well, it must be deep, you know. They're packing now, so we we uh, we went out on the track and saw they were packing. It looked pretty nice. It looked really good. Nice to have some grip after it was so slick the night before. So I think our team is loves the grippy tracks. So uh, bring it on. We was like, yeah, here we go. Now we're back in business even more. So they get it all ready to go and and like. At six o'clock on the dot, it's just it gets black and the heavens open, you know, and it's just dumping. <laughs> Suddenly, it's just dumping rain, and uh, it got turned into a huge mud bog on the track, you know. And it rained for a probably a good forty forty five minutes or more, and uh, you know you gotta hand it to the fans that that stick it out. I don't know. They they reported there was about eight thousand people in the grandstands. I think. Uh, during this situation, but it was it was heaving, absolutely heaving with people, as it as it would be for the finals. Eskastuna, you know, Smith and I are coming in to try to to retain the title they took last year, and uh, here we were having a having a heck of a year. Want to come in there and basically turn that around. We wanted to we wanted to get our two points back and smoke these guys, which that's our game plan for next week. Uh, now, after this whole thing got canceled, you know, it, it ended up being so wet, so deep. So nasty, you know. We we walked the track and and uh, it was really deep. So they they had they did what they could to try to scrape some of the dirt off the top and and make it rideable. But as soon as we walked out on the track, you could feel right away it, your feet were sinking, you were sliding. You know, it was so wet. So uh, you know, after working on the track for an uh, hour and a half or something, uh, the referee had to cancel it. It was just there was no way. It was too dangerous, too deep, and and uh, really really inconsistent. To ride around by yourself was one thing. Uh, to race was just no way at all. So, you know, they had to call it. And again, we have to say, you know, thanks to the fans. I hope that they will all come back next week when they've rescheduled it for next Tuesday. Um, and I hope they'll come back and, and uh, support it again. I'm sure they will. It's the, it's the finals. And, and uh, um, you know, Samantha, they, they want to um, 
they want to try try to beat us again, but uh, you know we don't anticipate letting that happen. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be really really fun, and uh, we want gold. So we're going for it. And I have to say too, you know, they've had Grand Prix events in Eskastuna in the past, and when they've rebuilt and they made this new track, and and it's so. The stadium there, the new stadium that I say the new stadium because I rode the old one too, but it's not that new these days. However, it's such a cool stadium. the The whole overall situation. I know they've had their financial difficulties, and it seems like they're they're doing pretty well these days. And I even had a, a small chat with Tony Olson the other night that, you know, walking around that track before the meeting there, and it was packed. You know, there were so many people in the grandstands. The music was playing. There's, you know, there's, there's all the, the kiosks are open. You know, selling all the merchandise and food and drinks, and it was, it was a killer, killer atmosphere. I felt like I was at a festival or something, and the people looked like they're having fun. It didn't matter if it was wet and cold, and everyone was having a blast. Kids running around at the grandstands, and it was absolutely heaving. And I just suddenly thought, this is, we, we need to have a Grand Prix here again. It would be really, really cool. This, this, they've got so much space there, and it's, you know, Eskilstuna is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a decent sized city. You have Stockholm not far away. It really seems to, to be another uh, key venue for the future. So whatever they do in Sweden, they should definitely not rule this place out. You know, you got uh, there's some some nice stadiums and there's some nice racetracks around this country. And uh, just as I walked around there, and I thought, you know, if that was eight thousand people, and they still had room for many more, this has got to be something for to be considered. So uh, I've, I've laid my uh, my point down there to uh, Tony Olson. I thought this is a, a cool venue, and it seems like they've got their their um, the, you know, say their economy is doing good now too. So that club's back on on the way up. So you never know. Future is there. There, there could be a, a future for Eskilstuna for a Grand Prix potential, but then again, that's just me. I don't know what BSI is thinking or, or FIM, where they're going to go with it. However, it'd be pretty cool. And um, now, we come back, it uh, ends up being kind of a busy week for me now, too. I'm headed off to, to Poland, uh, excuse me, for, for some open meetings this weekend, one in Gniezno, uh, and then we got the Diamond Cup, the second round of the Diamond Cup is on Saturday in Motala. And the first round in France went really good. You know, they, they, uh, they had a, a great crowd. Sadly, there was, there was uh, quite a few riders that jumped out of the or, or canceled last minute. So they only ended up having like 12 or 13 riders that showed up, which is a real shame. And, uh, you know, this guy, Navratsky, he's putting on such a good deal. And this Diamond Cup is new to Speedway. It's not new to a lot of people from, from different sports. And uh, the scoring system is interesting. The winner of the overall four-round series wins a diamond worth half a million zloty. I think second place is like a diamond worth 250,000 zloty. And then the third place is a diamond worth 150,000 zloty. So this is, these, are, you know, these are hefty prizes, you know. And, and the guys that are going for it, they're, they're digging this. This is something new, and it's, it's a different kind of carrot for all of us. And um, I think that the concept, people pro- probably didn't believe that this was going to happen and they thought it was too soon or whatever, but it's happening, you know, and, and it's growing. I think they learned a lot in the first round there in, in France, and uh, that, that venue was so cool. It's out, it's out in the country a little bit, and I've, I've really only ridden in France one time in, uh, in Marmande in a grass track that uh, the great Simon Cross hooked me up with. I have to say the great... I'm just gonna make him. He is the great Simon Cross, but it's hard to say that live because then he gets, he'll come back and and remind me. Remember, you called me great. <laughs> Gotta love Crossy. So, there I was in in the area where Crossy lives as well, and came into this race. It's a really cool little venue. Like I said, you're driving down this this uh, typical beautiful little country style road in France, and then suddenly there's this, you know. There's just this little sign that says Speedway, and you look over, and there's a track, and the track is right along the side of a train track, and and uh, a really cool kind of sits down in a little bowl, so the fans are up above the stadium, the track a little bit. Uh, it's a it's a kind of a 
a, a rad shape because it goes uphill down the back straightaway or up the back straightaway and curves slightly. The straightaway is not really straight. It's kind of almost a D shape. And then you kind of go up. It's banked corner. And then you come back downhill along kind of parallel to the train tracks down the front straightaway. And the referee's tower is there. And then directly behind the referee's tower, it can't be more than sort of three, four, five meters or something behind the safety fence. There's the railway line, and the train comes smoking past during the heats. You know, it just pa- it goes. It's going both directions too. So if you're uh, if you're lucky, the train's going with you as it goes smoking by you. So you just see the red lights from the back of the train as it goes by. You can't shut the throttle off. Or you get unlucky. You're coming the other way. You know, you're coming down the. You're going down the front straightaway, and the train's coming the opposite direction with the headlights on. So you feel like you got this dude coming at you head on. It's yeah, you know, obviously they're on the side, but it freaks you out the first time and you're not ready for it. And I didn't realize it either because people say, no, did you see the train? And I didn't see it the first couple heats. But suddenly here I am <laughs> faced with the train going head on with me. It's pretty cool. So uh, anyway, Diamond Cup, second round, Motala this this Saturday. Uh, for me too, it's cool because I'm going back to my, my old home track uh, from Piratana when I raced there uh, for for quite a few years. And uh, had to leave there this year. They dropped down a division. And uh, now I see they won the league. They've had a great year. And then they've got this potential to be back in the Elite Series for next year, 2019. So hats off to them. Congratulations. And I'm going back to the home track this weekend. So I'm going to see a lot of the old fans and uh, you know some sponsors and some of the people that were uh, there during my, my years of riding with the club. And uh, I'm stoked that they made it back because it's it's a great club, great support, and they they deserve to be in the the elite series. So you know, again, good job, and I really look forward to going back there to race against some of the local matadors, the Dobinson brothers. I think, or at least Jonas is in for sure, and um, and some of my current buddies too, and and racing with Oliver Berenson, and and then the guys Everson and Jepsen Jensen, and a few others that are in the in this round that are, were in the first round too. So going to be good. I hope a lot of you are going to pay attention or watch if you can get it on, on some of the streaming channels that they're doing. It's going to be pretty, uh, this thing's going to grow, so watch it carefully. And uh, I hope this will be a, another successful round. It'll be very well organized because it's, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in Motala. They're, they're used to running races like this, and uh, it's going to be a good deal. So um, now, just keep on rolling, and I go back to Poland on Sunday for another open meeting in Krakow. And then straight back Monday for to be prepared, ready for round two of the finals here in Sweden, back in Eskilstuna. So uh, I can say last week didn't really go to plan from the racing side of it to the weather side of it, you know. And uh, it, it's been amazing that the season has been incredibly good with the weather. We've like been so lucky. I could have said that I was in California all year, and uh, I could get used to that. <laughs> so uh, it's been good. Now we're uh, we're reloading and getting ready for uh, a really busy few days ahead, and um, hopefully we're going to be able to. Uh, me and Stefan are going to, or Stefan and I, I should say, going to be proper, are going to be able to get together again and uh, start uh, start re uh, re recording uh, from next week. And we've got a few guests lined up to come and join us. So I hope that we're uh, going to keep you guys entertained. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to learn, and uh, it's always fun to to hear from some of the dudes that are in the in the group in the leagues right now and winning championships, leading championships, or um, just picking up valuable information about what it was like, how you got started, and why the heck do you want to race with Greg Hancock? I mean, who's he, right? So, anyway, you guys, I'm gonna say. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I have to go pack my bag and head for the airport and uh, go play some more Speedway. So um, as we said last week, you guys all live it up. Have a great week. Be good peoples. And uh, thanks for listening to The Real 45 Podcast, episode 50, 50 stinking episodes we've done in a row. And we're still rolling. And there's a lot more to come. So uh, you guys inspire me. And... For that reason, I I just keep talking. So when you don't want to hear me anymore, just let me know and I'll quit talking. <laughs>
All right, guys. Have a great day. Be good peoples. And uh, here's another toast to you. Drink your coffee. Drink whatever you drink. And uh, have a great weekend, too. See you next Welcome week. Welcome to Real 45 with Stefan and Greg Hancock. We vibe out and have real talk. So tune in and check this out. Yeah, today is a new day. Let's seize it now and get hype. We talking about our careers, our family, and just life. Yeah, share my story with you. Inspiration like every day. Real 45, we gonna keep it live. I keep episodes on replay. Hey, Real 45. Yeah, Real 45. Show them how we do it, man.